welcome, welcome to worship. We welcome all of our guests who are with us today worshiping, all of our regular members, all of you who are worshiping with us online. We welcome you as well. And let's give just um, glory to God and a round of applause for this beautiful music that we had this morning from Holy Fire. We welcome you, Gordon and Holy Fire. Thank you. I know that's hard for Presbyterians to clap in worship, <laughs> but believe it or not, <laughs> it really is a sign of glorifying God when we do that. Well, my brothers and sisters, I would encourage you to read the announcements for yourselves that are printed in the bulletin just to bring a couple to your attention. We do have a congregational meeting scheduled for November 24th, so please make time to be able to attend to that meeting. We'll be presented with the budget. You will vote as a congregation congregation on my terms of call, and also we will be electing our new leaders for the 2025 year. So please also be in prayer for those things as well. And if you have any questions or concerns, you can always contact me, call the office, or speak to any elders or deacons who may be available even today or through the week. Well, we have a special guest with us this morning, <clears throat> excuse me, for our minute for mission. This comes from our mission committee, and this is Damian DeCola, who's here to talk to us for a few minutes about Shenango on the Green. Shenango on, a green, on the Green is one of the missions that we have supported for many years, so please give him your prayerful attention. Damian? Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you, Pastor Lori. Thank you, Sandy, for inviting me today. I, uh, I really appreciate the time to, to speak to you, to speak to you all and tell you a little bit about Shenango on the Green. Um, how many people here, just show of hands, have heard of Shenango on the Green or, or know what we do? Okay, quite a bit of you, that's great. We also have several residents at Shenango on the Green um, who we love and care for, and, and that's very important to us. Um, Shenango on the Green was founded by the Presbyterian Church. It was founded in 1966, so almost 60 years ago. Um, and also, we're part of Presbyterian, Presbyterian Senior Care Network um, that was founded in 1890. So we have shared the same religious values um, as, as all of you that are gathered here today. And it's very important to us. It's in our mission statement, and it's the foundation of everything we do here in Western Pennsylvania, um, and most importantly, up here in New Wilmington. Um, the Presbyterian Church, especially First Presbyterian of Newcastle, has done such a good job helping to support us with our senior care fund and helping our seniors, especially those you know, that are, may run into some financial difficulty. When, when we have residents come to us, we offer continuous, continual care. We're a CC, CCRC, which is a continuing care retirement community for anyone that doesn't know that. And what that means is from the time that you come to Shenango on the Green and you move in, we're gonna take care of you for the rest of your life. And once you're there, we wanna keep you there for your entire life. So we would never tell you, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to leave for some other reason. Uh, we do our best to make sure that you're safe and comfortable throughout your life. Um, and that's whether you come in independent living, which a lot of people think of Shenango on the Green as a home. Really, a lot of Shenango on the Green is independent living. People coming and going just as they would with an apartment, but with the knowledge that they're never going to be a burden to their family, that they're cared for in the event something should happen to them. They're tired of having all of those obligations of caring for a home. And those are a number of the concerns and reasons that seniors come to us. And, and one of the largest ones is control of their lives. Um, you know, for me, and I think part of the reason that I'm standing in front of you today is um, you'll hear a lot, you know, oh, Darn it, Shirley waited too long and had to go to whoever was there that had a bed available to take care of her in, in assisted living or personal care. And with my mother-in-law, um, you know, she had an injury and went into the hospital 
Uh, and we got a call about a week or two later, and they said, okay, she's ready to leave the hospital. She has to go somewhere. We didn't know where. Um, so she was sent to a, a local facility because that's who had a bed, had a bed available. And, um, you know, in not all cases is that the best thing for that person. That person may not um, have envisioned themselves being there. It may not be the best care for them. Um, and, and so when I experience something like that with my mother-in-law, it's, it's very important to me to make sure seniors, you know, seniors like yourself, um, you know, whether you're a, a, a mother, a father, a son, a daughter, that you can come to me and, and I can help educate you to make the best decision. And the best decision is not always going to be Shenango on the green for you, and that's okay. Uh, we're never here to sell you. We're, we're, we're here to take care of you and look after you for the best way possible. If your son or daughter can care for you in their home, that's a beautiful thing. Uh, but if you do need somebody to care for you, we have a loving staff that is so nice, and that's what we, you'll hear it when you walk through Shenango on the green, is the love and respect that our community has for one another. Um, and that's what appealed to me most when, when I first came to Shenango on the green. I, I've worked in the city of Newcastle now for most of my life, um, well over half of my life. Uh, so taking care of people here locally is, is very important. Um, Shenango on the Green is a great option for senior life. I would ask all of you if you have questions. I won't take up Pastor Lori's time. I have business cards sitting right outside as soon as you walk off to your right on the table there. Please grab one, call me, stop in, even for if it's for five or ten minutes. I'll talk a little bit more about what we have to offer um, and how it might be something rewarding for you as your lives progress. Um, I welcome all of you to come. Join. We have events once a month in 2025. Uh, so even if you just call to get on our mailing list, you'll receive something in the mail that tells you a little bit about the events we're having and you can come get an introduction to Shenango on the Green yourself. So that said, I wanted to thank you again, Pastor Lori, for your time. Thank you so much, Sandy, for inviting me. I look forward to stopping back again sometime. Maybe we'll do this once uh, every half year or year. Um, but I do appreciate the time and thank you so much and God bless you. Thank you, Damien, appreciate that. And as may God's peace be with you. Thank, thank you. you. Very much. And as many of you know, we do have church members who live there at Chenango on the Green. We also support them at Christmas time. Please keep those good folks in your prayers, not only the residents, but the staff too as well. They care so much for them. We also have a very special moment for mission this morning, and this is Chad Ubrey. So Chad, I'm gonna have you come on up here. We're so touched by this. Did you wanna come up too, Christina? No, but Christina's back there. Wave your hand, because you're gonna be praying for her too as well. Please give your attention to Chad. Thank you. Um, through the nudging of God and a, and a series of events, uh, Christine and I have decided over um, Thanksgiving uh, to go to North Carolina over Thanksgiving weekend and help in hurricane um, relief down there uh, for the people of Asheville. Um, many of you know our daughter Madeline uh, goes to school down um, uh, right outside of right outside of Charlotte, and um, that hurricane uh, came up. Hurricane Helene came up, and it, it just missed where she is, and it went over, of course, into the mountains, and they were. Uh, they were devastated. And so we were thinking about um, what are we going to do for, for Madeline for Thanksgiving break uh, to get her home, time frame, money, all this kind of stuff. And, and I said, you know what, why don't we get down there, pick her up, and then take, it's about an hour and a half drive over to, to the Asheville area and spend the weekend um, just serving where we can. We're not 100% sure what we're doing yet. Um, but we're hoping to be there um, for Thursday, Thursday morning and serve some Thanksgiving meals um, and then spend the weekend just doing some, some cleanup, uh, organizing supplies, maybe delivering some supplies, whatever they, they need us to do. Um, we're going to do it for uh, three or four days there. So um, we're, we're really excited about it. You know, I, I've done a lot of mission trips in, in my life. I've gone down to Mississippi three times after Hurricane Katrina. 
Um, been out to Joplin, Missouri um, after the tornado out there several years ago. So it's just, it's just really fulfilling. I, I get, I get uh, my, my juice out of that. So uh, it's been a long time, several years, and so I'm excited about it. I think Christine is excited about it. Uh, I know Madeline is. I know Madeline is. So you know, it might be sleeping on an air mattress in a gym somewhere, but but uh, we we can do it for three days. So uh, so we're excited about it. So we want to open it up and and give folks uh, here a chance. Um, if you'd like to contribute either monetarily, we'll make sure the money gets to the to the people that need it, and supplies. You see some of them, you know, listed there. They need uh, you know all kinds of stuff, cleaning supplies, uh, maybe some canned goods, whatever. And the other thing that I would add would be. Um, when I went out to, to, to Joplin several years ago, we went over Thanksgiving as well. Some of you may remember um, Kurt Savage, who was at this church. Uh, him and I and another, uh, another gentleman went out to Joplin, and um, we had a uh, U-Haul. I don't think we're going to have a U-Haul this time. Um, but we had a U-Haul full of, full of stuff, and we just stood on a corner somewhere and passed out Christmas presents because, um, you know, the, these families were devastated, um, and they weren't going to have Christmas essentially. And so it was just really neat to get in the back of the truck and Santa Claus. I was just passing out things and 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 and, and there was, you know, some some God moments where people said, "You know, I really need this." And I went to the back of the truck and we had it. We just asked for stuff and 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 just happened to have what people needed. So, you know, if you had some small toys or Christmas presents, I'd add that to the list as well. We'll make sure that uh, you know, we can get what we can to these people. Um, so we'll be here the next several Sundays. Thanksgiving's coming up pretty quick. This came on quickly. Uh, but we'll be here, I think, every Sunday through before we leave um, over Thanksgiving. So if you, if you have some supplies you want to bring in, we'll make a space out in Galbraith Hall. Um, and we'll make sure that we take them on Sunday when we leave. Um, and then if you'd like to make a monetary donation, um, you can certainly do it either in, in the box or online. Just mark. Just mark uh, hurricane relief or something like that, so so we know where to uh, attribute it, and we'll make sure that um, that, that gets there. Um, so thank you very much. We are looking forward to it, and we'll certainly report back when we are uh, back in December. Thank you. Thank you, Chad. Mm -hmm. In just a few minutes, we're going to pray for Chad and also for uh, Damien and Chenango on the green when we get there. Okay. So thank you very much. Appreciate that. Well, my brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is here in this time and in this place. It is Jesus Christ who stands at the door of our heart and who knocks. And when we open that door and we invite him in, he has promised to come and be with us and to dwell within us. And so, my brothers and sisters in Christ, I invite you now to open your hearts, open your minds, open your spirits as we begin to worship God. Please pray with me. Loving and holy God, we thank you. We praise you for your presence here today. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that we believe overshadows us, anoints our mind, anoints our prayers, our praise of you, anoints our hearts, and opens us to your truth. We ask that all that may distract us from your presence here today be removed. 
that our eyes will be open in new ways to see you, our ears to hear your still, calm voice that does speak through every experience in our lives, to be filled with your grace, with your peace, overshadowed by and with your love. And we raise before you, holy God, as we lift our prayers to you this day, all that we may speak and sing, and even those things that we keep within the silence of our hearts and our minds, we lift before you as well, Chad and Damien, and the ministries that they are involved with, and the information that we can support prayerfully, and when called, give to, and when called, lived into. May we be guided by your spirit, filled with your spirit. As we offer to you this morning our praise of you, our thanks of you, our deepest joys and concerns. May this time of worship be a blessing to you and a blessing to us. In Christ's name, we ask these things. Amen and amen. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to worship our God this morning, please stand and join together in our opening song of praise. Holy, holy, holy. My brothers and sisters, before you take a seat, turn to someone near to you, a new face near to you, and offer them the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. May God's peace be with you all. God's peace. God's peace be with you.
to the stage. Go to the stage. Go back to the stage. Just go to the stage. And my brothers and sisters, as you find your way back to your seat, and we once again take up our order of worship, remember that we confess our sins silently in community because it reminds us we are all in need of the merciful forgiveness and redemption of our God for us in Christ Jesus. And as we accept these gifts, we in turn are called to extend them just as readily and easily as graciously to one another. And so at this time, I wanna invite you to join together in our prayer of humility. You can find, find it in the bulletin and also words on the screen. How often, O oh Lord, have we believed that the greatest commandment is our love for ourselves solely. We often ignore the cries of those in need. We have turned our backs on opportunities to serve you by serving others. Many times we have thought only of our own wants and desires and ignored the needs of others. Help us to truly understand the commandments to love you with all of our heart, soul, strength, and mind. And let us care for our neighbors, both far and near. Bring us back to your loving light and hear us now as we silently confess our sins to you. For we ask these things in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, the reality is that in the midst of our darkness and ignorance, the bright light of God's love shines through healing our anguished souls. Rejoice, beloved of God, for God's love and forgiveness are given to you this day. Please join together in our baptismal promises. Through the waters of baptism, we have died with Christ and are raised with him. With gratitude and with faith, we will walk the way of Christ. And this is the good news of the gospel, that in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Please stand. There you go. Thanks. Change my heart, oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God. May I be like you. Please be seated, friends. The reading is from Ruth, chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem and Judah went to live in the country of Moab, he and his wife and two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi. 
and the name of his two sons were Malan and Chilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem and Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other Ruth. When they lived there about 10 years, both Malan and Chilion also died, so that the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. Then she started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had considered his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living, she and her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, go back each of you to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find security each of you in the house of your husband. And then she kissed them and they wept aloud. They said to her, no, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, turn back my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. Even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, it has been far more bitter for me than for you because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. And then they wept aloud again. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. So she said, see, your daughter-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people will be my people, and your God my God. Where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. May the Lord do thus, and so to me, and more as well, if even death parts me from you. Then Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her. She said no more to her. First Corinthians 13. But when Christ came as a high priest for the good things that have come, even though the greater and perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy place, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls with the sprinkling of the ashes of a heifer sanctifies those who have been defiled so that their flesh is purified, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from the dead works to worship the living God. For this reason, he is the mediator of a new covenant so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance because the death has occurred that redeems them from the transgressions under the first covenant. of love, 
have to apologize for Daniel. That wasn't his fault. And um, it was just a mix-up, a, a clerical mix-up. So I'm going to read 1 Corinthians 13. Um, if nobody else noticed that was wrong, <laughs> you got to read your Bible. Um, but Daniel does a nice job reading, and I appreciate that. So let me offer this to you. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels and I do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor, give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but I do not have love. I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, trusts, hopes, perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, when it is in part, it will disappear. When I was a child, I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, this is Paul speaking, when I became a woman, I put away the childish things behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall be fully known, even as I am fully known. And now these things remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Thank you. So this all ties in together. We should really call this the Sunday of love, I think. Um, not sentimental love, not romantic love. This is a love that is talked about by Paul. And let me say something. Please, if you ask me to officiate your wedding, don't ask me to read chapter 13. <laughs> Paul wrote that to a church that was fighting <laughs> because he wanted them to learn what it meant to be in Christ Jesus and not just say it and not just be filled with the Spirit and speak in tongues and prophesy, but to actually behave in a way that reflected Christ within them, transforming them. And we hear what that means in the gospel story today. So before we hear this word from the Lord, I invite you to take a moment and to recognize <clears throat> Jesus Christ that is here in the presence of the Holy Spirit and God's truth that still speaks to us today in this scripture. And we thank you, loving God, for this truth, this truth that has the power to transform us, to root us ever more deeply within the reality of you, that has the power to transform us moment by moment, day after day, so that each day we are more fully known by you and we know ourselves better. We have that light shining into the darkness so that it may be brought forward and healed. We thank you for the truth of your word. May we hear it with new ears. May we see it with new eyes and believe it in a new and in a wonderful way. 
May we be blessed in these grace-filled moments with you. In Christ Jesus, we ask these things. Amen and amen. And this is Jesus and the disciples. And they are in the midst of leaders of the temple. And one of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that he answered them well, this is Christ Jesus, then he answered them well. The scribe asked Christ Jesus, what commandment is the first of all? And Jesus answered, the first is hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. And the second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, and there is no other commandment greater than these. And then the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and besides him there is no other and to love him with all the heart, with all the understanding, with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that, he answered wisely. He said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, No one dared to ask him any question. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Now, I have to thank one of our uh, community Bible study members that brought a wonderful meditation to us um, in this past week during our study that actually noted where one theologian wrote that 1 Corinthians 13 might be the supreme piece of condensed theology in the entire Bible, that the whole message of Scripture is there. And I agree with that. The supreme piece of condensed theology of the entire Bible. And theology just means the study of God. Love is patient. Love is kind. This is 4 through 7. And I'll tell you what, if you could write this paragraph on your heart, I would encourage you to do it. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not jealous, love is never boastful or conceited, love is not rude, nor does it take offense, it takes no pleasure in other people's faults, it is always ready to excuse, to trust, to hope, and to endure, love never comes to an end. And you know what Paul is telling us? He's telling us that this transformation, and it really is that to be able to love in this way, is, has, it has an eternal quality. It's infinite, without end. It's the very being of God. It doesn't have a beginning in human existence. We tend to think everything starts with us. Paul is telling us this has nothing to do with you starting it and everything with God. It's eternal. All these other things will pass away. But this has, again, no beginning, no middle, no end. It's simply God. That's why it still exists, and that's why Jesus said to the scribe, you are so close to the kingdom of God, which he always said was within us, but we cannot see unless we are born again of the Holy Spirit. And as 1 John tells us, God is love. You cannot love another person and say you believe in God because it is God within you giving that witness. And I'll tell you what, my brothers and sisters, if you want to know what God is, If you struggle to believe who God is or to see or to experience God, I encourage you to read this passage every day and ask God, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the searcher of all hearts for what you need to believe 
And I guarantee you, it will not take you long to begin knowing in the deepest sense and part of yourself that God and God's love for you has always been there because it has nothing to do with you loving first and everything to do with who God is already present in this world and in you. But you know what our problem is? You know what our struggle is? And this is another thing that our friend brought to us on Wednesday. Our brains have evolved to the point that we more than often hold on to negative thoughts and hatred. It sticks to us like Velcro. Positive, loving thoughts slip off us like Teflon. And the truth is, to retain a positive, loving experience, you have to intentionally hold on to that for at least 15 seconds to allow it to imprint on your brain. You must deliberately, consciously choose to love and not to hate. We hate so fast. We judge so fast. But the truth is, because most of us haven't been taught to consciously choose to love and not to hate, we have decent people all over the world, in our country, in our political parties, in our leadership positions, in churches, in our workplaces, in our families, who are much more at home with hate and judgmental behavior than they ever are with love. And the tragedy is, they don't even know it. They don't even know it. And here's something for us to remember, my brothers and sisters, and this is intentional on my part. As divided as our country is in these days, and I hear people fight out on the street. I was driving home the other day from the office, and there were these two parents pushing their babies up the street in their strollers, yelling at each other about who to vote for. And my first thought was, that little child's like a sponge. <laughs> Hearing all that, taking that all in, I mean, it's fine to debate, but to argue so loud that people in their cars and traffic can hear you? Remember this, my brothers and sisters, no matter which side you are in the politics of today, after the elections, the people who may vote differently from you will still be there the day after the elections. They're your brothers and sisters. And if we are truly called to be people who follow Christ Jesus and his commands and to love others in the ways that God loves you, to practice this love toward yourself, to love God with everything that's in you, which means your words, your thoughts, your actions, to love yourself that way, to love other people that way, that matters before and after this election. People on the other side of the fence from you will still be there the day after the election. And your love should be patient and kind and not jealous and not boastful and not conceited and not rude and shouldn't take offense or take pleasure in the failings of anyone else, always ready to excuse and to trust and to hope and to endure and to recognize because that's God and comes from God, it doesn't end. And we don't get to decide when to do it. We're called to be that in every circumstance in every situation, that's why we hear that beautiful line out of Ruth. We have no idea how those women suffered when they were widowed. They had nothing. If they didn't go back to their tribe and their tribe took them in, they were forced into slavery, into prostitution, or they starved to death. You will be my people. 
your God, my God. Oh, that we could say that to each other, even when we don't agree. The same way that God holds us as sinners, and we all live in that state, the symptom of that is the lying and the cheating and the hating and the gossiping and all that. Right? The same way that God holds us in this, who have been forgiven and are redeemed, you see, we're to hold one another. God allows us to live the circumstances of our choices and our sin, but gives us every strength to live in the peace and in the awe and the wonderful presence of God's merciful love for us. And no matter what, that love of God gives us the clarity to see reality for what it is. And it's in that compassionate sight we are to hold each other. And that is no small thing. Spirituality is whatever it takes to keep your heart open so that still, calm voice that speaks through the earthquake and the wind and the fire gives witness to the kingdom of God within you. And if it can't give witness in the joy, how do you ever expect it to give witness in the earthquake, the wind, and the fire? It takes daily, constant work Quite frankly, because our egos and the events of life want to close God in us down. And the voice in our dominant culture tells us, it's fine to judge, it's fine to dismiss, it's fine to hate. Be full of fear. Be filled with anxiety. Everybody else is, who cares? And then get rid of that in some self-destructive way that makes you feel better. You know what the greatest threat to faith is today? It's relativism. If it's not relative to something, they don't have to care about it. Well, you do have to care about it. You do have to care. And the truth is, if any of us don't have a spiritual practice that keeps the heart of God in your heart open. You know what'll happen? You'll end up being a grumpy old man or a hateful woman because by the third of our life, negativity and bitterness is often all their person will have left. My brothers and sisters, we must understand that it is God in Christ who leads us to live in love to develop a generosity of spirit, a readiness to offer grace, a willingness to serve instead of to take. But each morning and each day, and it's even best at the day's end, we need to take the time to measure our inner spiritual temperature, if you will, by confession, by repentance, by forgiving ourselves and other people, and observe if your energy, if you will, your prayerful stance is loving and flowing outward, you need to recognize if it is also negative and sucking in hate. Sooner or later, by God's patience, when we open ourselves to God and to God's extraordinary love for us, many of us find ourselves eventually falling into the love that Paul writes about. And we learn how to draw our lives from that infinite source, which has no end and never fails us. For the nature of love and the nature of God are the same thing. And so I'm going to invite you now to take 15 seconds with me and allow the Holy Spirit to draw us to the positive, loving thoughts that are the thoughts of God while I offer this prayer. This happened to be on the Center for Action and Contemplation this morning on their uh, meditation daily meditation and this was the prayer please pray with me and as you recognize that presence of God that is within you through the power of the Holy Spirit allow yourself to relax into that presence 
to be aware of its holiness, to be open to the holiness of God. Allow your heart and your mind to be filled with awe and with wonder for this love that sent Christ Jesus into the world to reveal it, to offer us life and truth and a way. God, the lover of life, the lover of all these souls here today, you are the lover of our souls, you are the lover of our bodies, you are the lover of all that exists. It is in your love that keeps it all alive. And may we live in this love. May we never doubt this love. May we know that we are love, that we are created for love, that we are a reflection of you, that you love yourself in us, and therefore we are perfectly lovable. May we never doubt this deep and abiding and perfect goodness that exists for us and for all of creation. May our eyes be open to your truth. We are because you are. In Christ we ask these things. Amen and amen. And my brothers and sisters, as you ponder the ways in which the Holy Spirit may have spoken to you this day, I invite you to open your hearts and your minds and to listen to the beauty and the ministry and the music of Holy Fire.
there is no one Lord who compares to you. Ever so faithful, trusting and true. You've kept every promise you said you would do. What an honor it is to serve you. There is no Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Amen, amen. Oh, Presbyterians. So proud of you clapping a little bit. It's wonderful, wonderful. My brothers and sisters, while you're still seating, please join together in our affirmation of faith. Jesus Christ is born in the image of God, the firstborn of all creation. In him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible. All things have been created through him and for him. 
He himself is before all things. In him, all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn of the dead, so that we might come to have first place in everything. For in him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell through him. God was making pleased to reconcile all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. Amen and amen. For those of you who are worshiping with us online, we have communion this morning, so just get yourself something liquid, something bread-like, and you can join us this morning in the sacrament. And for the deacons and elders who are helping this morning, please come on up here in these front pews and join me. So in case you're wondering, these are the elders, these are the deacons, it's sort of like basketball. <laughs> no, it's not a house divided, really. I, I need both sides, yeah, what's that? Oh, Dave, oh, sorry, Dave. Oh, he wants to sit with the gals. <laughs> That's cool. You're a rose between all the tulips, isn't that lovely? Yeah, Dave's an elder, too. He was sitting on the wrong side, I guess. That's why I didn't see you. No, that's okay. Uh, I'm teasing a little bit. Um, but just so you know, church, because I know Daniel and I often travel, and I think, who are all those people up there who are helping? I kind of like to know who they are. Thank them sometimes after worship. So these are some of the leaders in your church, and you can speak to them at any time, pray with them, and also thank them. So as we prepare our hearts and our minds this morning for the great sacrament of thanksgiving, I invite you into our great prayer of thanksgiving, and I want to hear it with some passion. Okay? The Lord be with you. Oh, there you go. I'm so proud of you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks, our loving God, in every moment, in every time, in every place. We thank you for these moments of worship. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that is here speaking to every heart and every mind. And we thank you for this mystical presence of you in the bread and in the cup that remind us that we are part of a larger body of Christ Jesus. And that as the bread is broken, we're reminded of the cost of grace. It costs the life of Jesus the Christ. He gave it freely, he gave it obediently. And he gave it for the world, for all of creation, that we may know forgiveness and redemption and grace and love and peace and what it means to live now as we will live later in him as resurrected people. May we never forget the great cost of this grace and the witness unto which we are called and given the power to live into through and by and with Christ Jesus in God for us through the power of the Holy Spirit because of the Father's love. As we turn our attention to this sacrament, may we prepare our hearts and our minds, allow any anger or hatred or resentment or grudges to leave our, our conscious thoughts, the deepest parts of who we are, and to allow those spaces to be healed, to be filled with a love that is kind and patient, that sees reality for what it is, that is never rude or boastful, but always thinks of the other as well as itself, knowing, knowing this, friends, that if we don't love ourselves as God loves us, there is no way we can love other people as readily. We too must learn how to pray to love as God so loves us. We thank you again for these moments of sacrament, of prayer, of holiness. May we come to it humbly, Lord, awaiting to meet you. 
In Christ Jesus, we ask these things, amen and amen. The scripture tells us that when Jesus was at the table with the disciples whom he loved, that he gave thanks to Yahweh, who causes the grain to spring from the earth. Taking that bread, he broke it, and he said to his disciples, this is my body, which shall be broken for you. And after the meal, Jesus also took the cup. He took the wine. He gave thanks to Yahweh that causes the grape to spring from the vine. Pouring out that wine, he said, this is my blood that is shed for you and for the forgiveness of all sin. And this is the new covenant, that when you take this bread and you take this cup, you do this in memory of me. My brothers and sisters, when you receive the bread and you receive the cup this morning, please hold that until we all consume communion together. Are you going with Jan over there? My brothers and sisters, this is the bread of heaven, the body of Christ. Take and eat.
my brothers and sisters, this is the cup of salvation and forgiveness of sin. Take and drink. My brothers and sisters, join with me in prayer. Loving and holy God, we thank you. We praise you for the lives that we've been given. We thank you for the witness of your love in our lives. The fact that we can know you because we have been fully known, we thank you. For there is no more reason to hide or pretend or be anything that we are not, but simply to be the people that you have created us to be. May we never be afraid of this and always willing to lift our lives before you in thanksgiving, asking you for what we need and expecting you to answer us in the wisest and the most effective and fruitful ways. We dedicate to you this morning, Lord, our gifts, our talents, the income, the stewardship, the legacy that we have here at first from the ministries and the missions and the programs for the people. We dedicate this service to you this morning, this sacrament, our lives, trusting the fact that those who have been called and commissioned and ordained to use these gifts will be using them guided by your wisdom, your sense of justice, filled with your peace, bathed in your light and your love, so that the gifts will always be used for the relief of need, the good of people, the good of the world, the good of the church. Overshadow our country in this coming week. Remember that we are human beings made by you. May we be willing in our happiest moments and possibly in our worst moments to lift each other to you with our joys and our disappointments, lifting them to you, trusting them to you, and listening to what the scripture tells us, that we are called to pray for the people who are in positions of power in the city in which we live, for if it goes well for them, it will go well for us. May we be willing to hold all those who may win in any office before you, asking you to fill them with your knowledge, your wisdom, and your intelligence so that the decisions made will be made for the greater good of those that they are charged to care for and to lead and to govern. And may we be willing to carry the disappointment of brothers and sisters and the joy of brothers and sisters within the reality of your love, which is never rude, is patient, is kind, is understanding with your understanding, with your intelligence, your wisdom, your kindness, your goodness, your righteousness, your sense of justice and peace. May we be those people who live one foot in the kingdom of God now and in the world to come. And as we lift before you our deepest joys and concerns in this time of sacrament and prayer and worship, that we do so trusting the fact you take it all into yourself and through the power of your Holy Spirit, we believe life truly is transformed so that we might rest assured that in the end, that all shall be made well. All shall be made well, all manner of life within the Alpha and the Omega, who says, behold, I make all things new, will surely be made well. And we believe you hear us now in the prayer that Christ Jesus has given to us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. My brothers and sisters, please stand and join together in our closing song of peace soon and very soon. Thank you, elders. Thank you, deacons. My brothers and sisters, remember you have the living God in Christ Jesus within you. You have the kingdom of God and the good news within you. You are called to take that out into the world and to never be afraid. For it is Jesus Christ who strides out before you. He goes ahead of you. He prepares a place for you. He waits there for you. And when you lose your way, my brothers and sisters, I guarantee you, he will turn back on that road to meet you. And I bless you now in the power of our living, loving creator, God, our Father, who loves you more than you could ever imagine, whose love sent Jesus Christ into this world to reveal the life, the truth, and the way and the power of the Holy Spirit that has the power to bind you to God and to one another. Hallelujah. And all men have a wonderful week. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.
That's all right. That's all right. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. I really appreciate the invitation, and I'm glad we could help. Thanks, Marty.